Hello and welcome to this video which looks at an MBA management accounting question on the customer perspective of the balance scorecard. My name is Cam Scoley and I will be your guide in this video. My MBA students know the question from the textbook. As I was preparing this video, I realized that the question has some excellent practical application and that I should share it with my viewers. So I decided to post it under the Best in Show banner. This video will focus on comparing and contrasting the customer perspective of the balance scorecard for two restaurants. One, a pita place near a university, and two, an upscale steakhouse in an affluent area. You can see that even with what is technically the same industry, we have very different markets, different pricing, and different strategies for each restaurant. The question asks us to come up with the most likely balanced scorecard measures for each type of restaurant based on their very different strategies. We will then compare and contrast these. Just a reminder that this question focuses on the customer perspective only. Now let's do a quick review of what a typical balanced scorecard in the for-profit sector looks like. There is a financial perspective, a customer perspective, an internal process perspective, and a learning and growth perspective. This isn't the only arrangement for the balance scorecard, just a typical one. Now, let's zone in on the customer's perspective for each of these two restaurants. To plan out the best customer measures, a great early step is to consider what is most important to the demographic in question. For the PETA place, there are four key attributes that are most important to satisfy. One is convenience, two, quick service, three, healthy options, and four, low prices. Now a good strategic exercise I recommend that organizations prepare is a very brief value statement that captures what the organization is trying to provide to its specific customer base. For the PETA place, the value statement could be something like a good meal for a decent price. Let's contrast this to the steakhouse. What is most important here? These four things come to mind. Good quality food and beverage, excellent service across the board, friendliness and great service are expected from the host or hostess, the servers, the managers, on and on. Whoever the customer comes into contact with needs to be on their game, so to speak. Third, the atmosphere is also important music, candles, things like that. And finally, fourth is reputation. In some cases, this is even linked to the chef at the restaurant. So what might the value statement for the steakhouse be? The value statement could be something like, a great meal coupled with an excellent experience. Very different statement from the pita place, no question. Let's not forget that an excellent strategy not only articulates the strategic differentiators, it also takes inventory of the very important non-differentiators. These are all the things that all players in the restaurant industry need to adhere to if they want to succeed. In the restaurant industry, these are primarily cleanliness, efficiency, safety, and polite service. Factors such as these are in effect the ante to play in that industry. They need to be there, and staff need to understand just how critical they are. Okay, so what are some of the key differences we would expect to see in the scorecards for each restaurant? Let's focus first on process time. At the PETA place, the shorter the times the better, so we would expect to see measures associated with timings. A couple of measures could be average time in the lineup. So in other words, the time from entering the restaurant to actually placing an order. People tend to feel like they are wasting time at this point, so ideally this is minimized. And the average time from order to transaction completion. This shouldn't be rushed, of course, but the sooner the better. Now contrast this to the steakhouse. They too could benefit by keeping track of time. One time that would vary from guest to guest, but would be good to have in terms of analytics is the average time from order to table. Note though that the steakhouse is not focused on speed the way the pita place is. Customers are there for an experience, 
So the clock does not tick in quite the same way. In fact, if people are enjoying a bottle of wine and chatting, it's actually possible to bring the meal too early. So times are important measures in both instances, however, from a, a very different perspective in terms of the objectives being sought. Some other types of measures we would expect to see in the P2Place scorecard could be number of orders processed per hour. This is good for both customers and profits. Number of specials and number of meals less than $7. The demographic here will see value in specials and cheap meals. Okay, so what measures would we see on the Steakhouse scorecard? Average dollar spend per person. Wine and spirit sales as a percentage of total. These sales are more profitable, so in a responsible way, the steakhouse wants decent sales of wine and spirits as part of the meal. Number of reservations is important. This signals demand and allows for better planning. And number of desserts, which are higher margin and usually considered an add-on sale. So this has been a look at some of the contrasting measures. What similarities might we observe? The first might be the number of return meals. Note though that the reasons for the return meals are likely different between the two restaurants. The pita place likely has mistakes as the primary reason for returns. For example, I asked for extra mushrooms or I asked for no mushrooms, that type of thing. The steakhouse returns are usually due to the customer not being completely pleased with something. I asked for medium and this is medium well. These vegetables don't taste good, etc. Customer satisfaction is another measure that would be on both scorecards. For the PETA place, the major drivers of customer satisfaction are speed and price. For the steakhouse, the major drivers of customer satisfaction are the meal itself, satisfaction with the server, and the general ambience of the restaurant. The experience of the meal versus the efficiency of the meal as we see in the PETA place. One other noteworthy contrast is the way that customer satisfaction information is collected. With a younger demographic, the PETA place can look to social media to find out what customers are saying and rating them at. Sites like TripAdvisor, for example, get a lot of attention now. The steakhouse should still pay attention to social media. However, it would also want to put stock in other more traditional tools like the comment card and employ uh, mystery guests more than the PETA place. A lot of times the mystery guest is asked to make some uncommon requests to test the servers on their ability to maintain a consistently positive experience. Okay, so here's a quick recap of what we have accomplished together plus some other thoughts. First, we compared and contrasted the measures of the customer perspective of the balance scorecard for two different types of restaurants. Turning to the financial perspective of the balance scorecard, it would likely be similar for each restaurant. Revenues, profits, return on investment, expectations, that would be on both scorecards. And a final point to make is that the difference in the customer perspective will directly affect the objectives and measures in the other perspectives, namely the internal process perspective and the learning and growth perspective. Now please let me remind you, in case you forgot or didn't know, the Balanced Scorecard remains the single best performance management tool available. It is succinct and yet focused and comprehensive, it is very understandable, and it is almost always a provision of large return on investment. In fact, there is no reason I am aware of that an organization should not consider managing itself by using a Balanced Scorecard. I hope you found this video to be a useful look at the customer perspective of the Balanced Scorecard. If you would like more information, don't hesitate to email me at cscoley at outlook.com or to call me at 416-209-0704. For my students, you can of course also reach me at my RMC account. Thank you for watching and please look for other videos I have done that might be useful to you. I wish you the best of success in your quest to improve your management accounting performance.